We all make mistakes, sometimes more often than we care to admit. You may have been a ham for so long that you probably can't remember, or don't care to remember, what it was like to be a newbie. My rookie days are much more recent, so my mistakes as an inexperienced ham are still all too painfully clear. I made so many mistakes during my first year as a licensed ham that I had enough to create a top 10 list. And who knows, maybe there are still some rookies out there that might benefit from my embarrassment. So here goes, my top 10 ham radio rookie mistakes. Let me know if you can relate to any of these. Or if you must, just laugh at me in the comments. Okay, I won't knock everyone's first ham radio. After all, the Bay of Fang is a great introduction to the world of ham radio operation. You know as well as I do that the Bay of Fang is a gateway drug. However, all Bay of Fangs are not created equal. If you must purchase a cheap HT, and yes, it was my first radio too, be aware of the many different models that are available out there. Because they are so cheap, many under $30, you won't get much in the way of advertising and details from eBay or Amazon distributors. My first radio cost $35 on Amazon, and when I received it, I couldn't transmit or receive on any frequencies above 146.2 MHz. Despite the fact that it was advertised as a dual band transceiver, the only way I could even investigate the problem was to purchase a separate programming cable, which leads right into my second mistake. The same warning that goes for Baofeng radios also goes to programming cables. Sure, you can buy a Baofeng radio for as little as $24, but you won't get a programming cable with the radio, and you'll need to quickly learn how to program the radio manually, which in itself can be very time consuming and also limit your ability to scan channels that you could be missing. You can get a programming cable cheap enough, but you need to be aware that there are more counterfeit cables out there for sale than authentic ones. I bought one on Amazon for about $13 and was disappointed to find that it wouldn't even recognize the radio using Chirp, which is a great free software application to program your radios. I did some research and learned that the manufacturer had purposely altered the chipset so that fake cables could not be used. So I went back to Amazon and looked specifically for one that claimed that it was original OEM with the Baofeng logo and found that it would cost me twice as much as the price of the fake cable, or in actuality about as much as the radio cost itself. Now imagine my surprise when I connected it to the radio and discovered that it too was a fake. At this point I've spent way more on fake cables than I spent on the radio which I was also suspecting might be a fake. After all, they are made in China. If by some chance my radio was not a fake, then it was at least defective, and I don't expect to be able to return a defective radio to Baofeng for repair or replacement. I got by for a short while without using the frequencies above 146 megahertz until I accepted the fact that I just needed to bite the bullet and buy a new radio. After researching the cable issue extensively with several other Baofeng users, we were able to identify an authentic OEM programming cable and I purchased my third cable, which again cost approximately the same as the radio itself. But this time, it worked. 
I'll put a link in the description to the genuine cable that worked for me in case you're in the same boat. Not only did the OEM cable work to program my radio, but it also helped me to discover that my first radio was not defective or fake. It was just pre-programmed out of the factory to limit the usable frequencies. So now I had two working radios. Later on I would discover that it was a good thing because I could use them for working satellites that had separate send and receive frequencies. But at this point I still couldn't even work the local repeaters. Why you ask? Well, it's all about the antenna. And the cheap antenna that comes with the Baofeng is short and not terribly powerful. I learned that they make antennas with coiled elements that could effectively wrap a long antenna into a small footprint. Now this time I had done some research and I knew to look for certain reputable brand names. I found a diamond tri-band stubby antenna for about $12 that promised extra coverage. The next valuable lesson I learned was not to trust $12 radio parts, especially when they get delivered from China. I also learned that there were fake antennas out there too. My new antenna, with its gold connector, looked great on the radio and made it a whole lot easier to carry the radio on my belt. However, the performance was laughable. I tested it with a friend as we were leaving a radio meeting together. When we were parked side by side in the parking lot, I was loud and clear. He pulled out of his parking spot, and that was the last he ever heard me. My signal broke up about 50 feet away from him, and he never heard me again. I eventually found a Nagoya. Don't ask, who knows what it really is. It was a telescoping antenna that was advertised as high gain for about $19. It's long and clumsy, but it works great. It's become part of my go kit for portable use. I'm sure there are great antennas out there, but there was a limit to what I was willing to pay put on a $24 radio, which I had already invested over $100 in. One of the lessons here is just start out with the $69 Baofeng, which comes with 8 watts, a decent antenna, and a real programming cable. After spending a whole lot more than $69 so far on radios and antennas, I still only had a radio with 5 watts, no matter how long the antenna was.